scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So all the teachings that we bring here are designed to achieve many things. Um, you must understand. Number one, designed to help us know God. It matters to God, it also matters to me that we know God, that our knowledge of God continues to progress. It's important to know God. It really is important to know God because in the knowledge of God is our confidence. Please listen. In the knowledge of God is our stability. If your knowledge of God is very low, you will not be able to survive today's world. Are we together? It matters. Thank God for the wonderful testimonies, but the pride of the believer, according to scripture, is not in the acquisition of things. Please listen very carefully. Whether you have a car, whether you have a house, whether a door was opened, whether you get married, whether your wife gives birth to quadruplets, all these wonderful things as interesting as they are, they are truly um, secondary matters. The real pride of the believer is your knowledge of God. No matter what you have, if you do not know God, you don't have anything. It's difficult to understand this because we need most of the things we chase. But I'm telling you, by and large, the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of God. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. He says, let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So the messages are designed to give us encounters, to increase our conviction about the person of God. Number two, the messages are designed to show us God's methodologies. You, you have to write this. The teachings are designed to open us up to what we call the ways of God. His methodologies, the way he operates. This, this, this camera man is operating this camera through knowledge. He knows how the camera works. It's not enough to be given the camera as a gift. You must know how it works. Are we together now? Both of them are standing behind their various gadgets on the strength of knowledge. No one will just get up out of zeal and stand behind the camera. They will not be able to do anything much. It matters not only that we know God, but that we understand his ways. I will continue to repeat this until you are well indoctrinated with this truth. That the knowledge, please listen, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his person, is infinite it will take us eternity to really know god but the knowledge of his ways as far as our excelling in this life is concerned they are finite they can be learned they can be known and you can apply them it takes a fool to believe god will put infinite methodologies to continue to learn 
as far as our excelling is concerned. No. The keys that we need to excel in life are finite. You can hold them and know that these are the keys given to men to excel. So the messages are designed to show us, to cause us to see. Number three, the messages are designed to allow the Holy Spirit to invade our lives and produce dimensions of results in and through our lives that only God can produce. The messages are like ushers. So it is not unusual that whilst the message is coming, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the midst of his people bringing deliverance, bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs. The messages were designed to be conducive for the operation of the Spirit. There are certain things that cannot be taught. There are experiences that only the might of God can produce. This is the limitation of the teaching ministry when it is done purely from a religious standpoint. It will only end up educating people there are some results that do not depend on education. People need to encounter the power of God and have situations in their lives change immediately. Praise the Lord. There are believers who come before God with emergencies. They don't need to learn any law. They don't need to learn any principle. They can learn when the situation has been solved the urgency will not allow them to give god their attention so you're not going to bring you're not going to help them by trying to say oh you are in a situation you know listen listen um you'll be learning a lot today you hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that um god's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alert you know that um you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alert but that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on wealth. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot... We, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous. Because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds that will not allow them. Let me give you an instance. A man of 60, 70 years, intellectually speaking, his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25 is that true? And so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough, to experience breakthrough, that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship. So unique to that man's condition, he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow. You will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding because he probably will be sleeping when the message is going on. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God. This is very powerful. Now, if that guy begins to allow you to use his life as a standard, you are in trouble. Because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him. 
So he will say, you can see my life. I didn't do anything. God just keeps blessing me any day. And then you will try to do that at 21. And you will be very surprised. When God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them. Is how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory. So we have a little here and a little there. Like materials for building a house but not well structured random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our mind and we fish out anyone in the face of danger we continue to fish them out one by one hoping at least one can work but platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy so that your understanding will be very exact you are not guessing This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. This is your your home we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house your home we welcome you today so come up here there is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection, to a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word, to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere and then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God you do not get these results you hold the person liable many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? 
while you are you are debating you are suffering and your family members are paying the price take the risk trust something take the risk it's worth the risk to throw yourself and say let me at least believe something God help me if I fail let your mercy be there to pick me up but take the risk don't stand in foolishness today you are here tomorrow you are there you are arguing and while you are doing that time is going take the risk you must believe something when Jesus met people who had convictions he had respect for them although their convictions were on wrong philosophies he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact are we together a man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. He's a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they won't let Jesus alone to preach. They will be at his crusades. And yet they will never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara. You have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go and leave the man in peace. And 10 cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening. But you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. He's asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what he can do does not mean you will ever experience him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. And I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember that this was not the first time he was beholding the face of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1. He saw at a level. Now he's seeing again. And he's seeing something different. That he did not see before. And there was rainbow round about the throne. In sight. Like unto an emerald. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. He said... Come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than here. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to hear. Like those who are outside now. Without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will Stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. 
not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we're not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we we'll read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up please, it's projected. It says, unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse, we're reading tonight. It says, and to make, read with me, all men see stop it's a ministry given to a man to make men see all men not some men not to make men of God see you are mandated by the grace of God to make men see because it is only as we behold that we are changed hearing does not change people as we behold him as in a mirror the Bible says the glory of God we are changed Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is true spiritual illumination. So come up hither is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see. To allow your eyes to see the deep things the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen, success generally in life is, is a measure of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do, but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself, you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where... The major ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the, if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, and we believe that by that initiation, we have become Pentecostals, as we call ourselves. And then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say, I've been born again five years. They say, how long did you know the Lord? You say five years. That's not a very correct answer. It may be correct historically. 
but it's not correct in terms of transformation. You are not five years in the Lord. It's your results that will show how old you are in the Lord. You are five years from the day you got born again historically. But that may not be a measure of your true age. In the realm of the spirit, our age is measured by the light that we command. We excel in light, not in time. The degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth. So we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing from when we consciously gave our lives to Christ, we believe that automatically as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be engaged to knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge, knowledge along the path of a field. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards, but when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves. And you know, sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time, usually when an election or an appointment in church, you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. But it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step. Although it's 10 years. You got born again 10 years ago. But the first correct result producing step started in 2019. So technically, you are about to be one years old. As far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned. Imagine if that one year old man is your man of God is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. The confidence he has in his ignorance will affect you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change, but that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them, that's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven, given to man by which we must be saved. Now you have the flexibility to change and when you find out in truth by the spirit and by the testimony of brethren around you that Jesus is truly the way, the truth and life, you stay there. 
in life and in death. This is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the Spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. There is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men. And the Bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept, this way of life can, can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their Christian experience. Colossians chapter 2 please and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. He said beware lest any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Now this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of you know all kinds of theological dimensions but it is true that there is something called the traditions of men and that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15 we'll read from verse 2 Matthew chapter 15 now some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples watch the story we're reading to verse 9 why do thy disciples transgress what the traditions of the elders someone is asking Jesus a question now so let's listen to what Jesus is about to say for they wash not their hands when they eat bread three but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, it is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, thou mightest be profited by me. Six, we're reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free. Tradition created that concept. You, you get the point now? Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Please take note of this. Let's just finish up. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh, These people draweth near to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Last verse. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In rising to superior spiritual dimensions, the Bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon. We are going to confront a, a resistance. Are we together now? And the Bible calls that resistance not Satan. He doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. 
The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride and move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours. I think I need to put this disclaimer very clearly. Are we together? The idea, any, listen, any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted. Because growth in the spirit that comes from God must also come with his nature of humility and love. Are we together? These two things must, they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart and then the richness of the love of God in you. That if I claim to grow spiritually, and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me. It could be that I am being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form, number one, produces humility. Number two, produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending, correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body. It should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see to open their eyes. When I rebuke them, it is a grace. When I correct them, it is a grace. It's more than a desire. You've heard me say correcting the body of Christ is a grace. Just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct. Because in correcting, many people have begun another error. It's easy for error to start. It just starts as an opinion strongly received. And very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it and enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial. There is a grace to correct the body. There is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth. So I'm putting this disclaimer very strongly. So that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations. No, my position as a person about the body of Christ is very, very clear. I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth. I was sent to the body. Are we together? It matters that we understand this. So that if the things I say sound difficult, for instance, then you, you refer to what I just said, that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm. The goal is to wean us out of imperfection, to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity, where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth. Hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly that still needs correction 
Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away? And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. Because I do not believe it. I'm not interested in it. It's not working in my life, for instance. So I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if for instance, I have taught that healing is wrong, miracles are wrong, and now I have found the truth, I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say, what is miracle a lot? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle a lot. But it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. And I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. Then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert and that's all you will get. The end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. You cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been, spe has been pegged around the, the, the ignorance that it is God's, God's, it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-R-P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. -A -A it can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. It talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride, or as a product of aberrated encounters that were not consistent with the word. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around, respectfully, let me call what we call... Um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement? That several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards. Many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven. Are you seeing that now? And if you are not careful... And, and by this, I'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain on to dressing and all of that. Those ones are established truths that were there long before. I know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of God 
that that has transited in glory now that kind of thing the the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are free. The word of God is still Lord, even over the realm of the spirit. You have to understand this. You can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it and come back with doctrines that later will become traditions, precepts, ordinances, There are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not tithe in hell. I don't believe that. There is nowhere in scripture that shows that non-tithing takes a man to hell. There are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ just because of issues here and there in their lives they still found them in hell I don't believe that <clears throat> listen Jesus listen very carefully I teach you sound doctrine when Lazarus listen carefully Lazarus and the rich man the rich man made a request and he asked he asked Jesus. He said, please, let Lazarus come back to life. Huh? And let Lazarus come and preach to my brethren. And tell them that I am there. In Hades, the place of the dead. And then he says, no, they have the law and the prophets. That means, he said, even if Lazarus should come back to life, they will not believe. But sufficient is the law. And the prophets listen to them I still speak to men who are in the earth realm and I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men the average believer now is not sure whether he will make heaven or not it's like we're waiting to see let the trumpet just sound and then I will, if I'm qualified I will know but it's wrong when a woman is pregnant she knows when a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that vague? It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty. Where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now that will destroy the saints if not adjusted, if not upgraded, and sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of these concepts with you and then if God grants grace, we can touch a few and pray. Am I boring you? Hmm. Number one. There is a big problem with the biblical understanding the biblical concept of greatness greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of christ what is the standard of greatness what is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment please listen very carefully where is the line between striving to be all that god designed for you to be and lost you have to pay attention because in both cases you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light. Speak to me believers. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And yet you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain. So while you want to quickly rise to the shining light, here comes another scripture godliness with contentment is great gain then it continues by saying we brought nothing to this world and it is certain that listen carefully 
I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world. But that having food and raiment, let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says, I search for a man. You know? To stand in the gap and I say, Lord, I'm the person that will rise. The next verse you are reading is teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. Please listen to me very carefully. Because many innocent people, people destroyed houses that they started to lintel level. Somebody came with a vision and another person will carry bulldozer and scatter everything and say this I will, and will be a missionary. By the next week, he will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him, ringing the bell and shouting and saying, repent, I know what I saw. He, it may not be a lie. But something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man. Ten years later, he will find out again he was wrong. While he did that, his children did not go to school. While he did that, the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it. Life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself. That's why God is teaching you this now. There are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back. But you can't return others who believed what you said before. What is the balance about greatness? This greatness thing has been fought. Another concept. What is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be matured in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes. They will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, you will not become a child again. You are an adult, it's too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know that this person is matured spiritually? There are many parameters we have put in the body of Christ. And many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until we leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Are you seeing that? There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai. The kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher or to be a soul winner? Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls. Nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. 
you notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says that just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says that just shall live by his faith. Next concept, our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. The discussion has come up here. A higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. Vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way, no way. There's no evil in God and the person cannot die. Another person will say, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your spirit, not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person and the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. And then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme that anything at all that represents, even if your car stops on the road, Based on the propositions that have been given, you have questions to answer. The first question is, where is your faith? The second question is, where is your God? Now, many believers are confused. And then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie. We have extended it now to fight songs. We fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look. And he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song. Rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept. One of the very controversial ones again. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering partaking of a grace and so on and so forth it's a very serious concept in the body of Christ there are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues there are people for instance who have made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man there are people who will not eat food until it is approved there are people who cannot travel until it is approved. When, when a woman is pregnant, her pastor knows first before her husband. And yet the Bible says what God has joined. Let no man. It didn't say let no spirit. put. That's a way of putting asunder. Because the man can say, well, that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own. And the same Bible says, wives, submit to your own husbands. There are members who salary the pastors know to the digital detail. That even their wives do not know. All of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship. 
there are churches that are almost like cults. You cannot make up your mind that, look, I'm tired. I love you, man of God, but I think I need to leave. I, I sense that God is calling me somewhere. Any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving, the man of God takes credit for it as his grace fighting you. Something is wrong. Listen very carefully. Remember the disclaimer I gave before I started? You now see why I gave it? Cult-like approaches of Christianity. A man of God can step into any house at any time. Peace be unto this house. And just say, what do you have? Oh, man of God, what do you want? Anything for you. Okay, a pounded yam and vegetable soup. Let me have goat meat. And, and you know, all, all kinds of things that we do. These are poisonous concepts. What of the ones that they collect? A, a, a member will receive the blessing from God and buy a new car. And the pastor will collect it. What of houses that have been collected by people in the name of, uh, of, uh, of Isaac? Are you seeing that now? I'm addressing concepts with you. What of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor? That you sit down and veto that I... As a man, I will never mention my name. I, as so, 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 as so man of God. I hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me. And I use my spiritual authority to break this marriage. And the son says, yes, sir, your wish is my command. It's occultism. What about accrediting life partners? That a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden from nowhere, the Geo's wife or the Geo can look and say, this guy is a serious partner in this church. This woman is coming to carry him out of the church. It is scattered. Dangerous and devilish. What of choosing for people where they should walk? Simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church. God gives someone open door of 250,000 in, in, in an oil company. And he has another job of, of 35,000 35, near your neighborhood. And he said, I know God. I, God wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound. And I rather keep you there. Than to employ another person. What of turning members into masons to build, to build? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. The message is called Come Up Hither. We're challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit. They are traditions of men. If I'm building this Koinonia Cathedral and your head does not carry one block, that's how difficult it will remain on you. No, sir. No, sir. And you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head, and I shake off every, every, uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? Every difficulty in my life. Now, listen. That also does not mean that by faith, you can connect your service to breakthrough. Because people have done it. They have connected their service to certain victims. There is a provision in the dealings of God, but it's not by threat and manipulation. It's by revelation. This is what is going on every Sunday in this country, in Africa, and around the world. What of the issue of seed sowing? I believe in giving. I believe in seed sowing. You are greedy. You don't sow seeds. You will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. Design in the system. No matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you? You keep it there. And what is not working for you? You can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against. against. My experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember. 
I'm, I'm, I'm so, I mean, two of us pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing. There are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator. Limited edition. How much is it? 85 million. And everybody begins. Heads of department bring 10, 10. Escorts bring 5, 5. And you know, all kinds of things. It's wrong. All in the name of fatherhood. This, all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood. I know a man of God, respectfully so, that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like like Aaron and her and the man of God believed that testimony and from that day provide even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying he will tell the son I'm on my way going and the son will it inconvenience them sincerely it's a true story almost tore the marriage apart because when God blesses them that and you know it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive. Fatherhood. Fathers, in all honesty and respectfully so, have been some of the greatest abusers of church members. All in the name of fatherhood. And remember the idea is, don't talk against me. Don't talk to me. You dare do that, a course will come. And truly it will come. Don't think it's just a joke. It will come. But the idea is threat. You don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ, especially in recent times. It looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lost driven materialistic lifestyle. I come from a very conservative background. It's an advantage to me. And my persona as a person, I'm, I'm quite conservative but the level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity is, is becoming disturbing because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people you are qualified for a harsh attack an attack under the covering of materialism. And it's not so. Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? What part of it is different from the English? You, are, you see, all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven. No matter how you get there, God will fix up every remains of you that arrives there but for now i'm not i'm not going to be part of it it's terrible and then on the other side 
on the other hand again i'm telling you there are people sincerely let me tell you i've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous what did i call it poisonous dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes god out of your life lost lost after things do you know that let me tell you this sincerely You've, you've seen this suicide happening all over now. People dying around. I believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people. Because if I teach you, for instance, that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old. Are we together now? Yes. No husband, no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house. You will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside you just brought it? Oh, amazing, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, they still were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything. That is nice. Oh, come to my house. We we'll tie a ribbon from one side of the building to the other and the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not, I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down and is on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this we've won? 700 naira. Ah, you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of we've won. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down? This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and debt is yoking their neck to death. Because of a point that was trying, was, was trying to be prove. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over, and now open a branch in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri. They killed. Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we're privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront of the move of the spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People 
people will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky. And your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks. And they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on a phone. And say that I had an encounter. And the devil says, this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation. Because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. We pride in these experiences. I am a woman of God because I see visions every day. I am a man of God because I see visions. A believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says, I'm going on a three-day fasting. Lord, what is in this vision that I can't see? Are we together now? And you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital with, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. Am, am I, am, am, it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I, can now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut them out of, of, of the people from my region. 
and you receive something because everyone that seeks finds. There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions. They just want this out of body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend? Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake? One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what they call it, phones. With all kind, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something. See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers? It was a tribe. Anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals, you will know that these are things that... It's, it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers. And it's part of the things that because God is preparing the church for the move of God. And so some of these ordinances have been restored. But if they are not guided... Any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You'll find your own path and you're singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands. More grace. It says lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings. Who attempted to correct scripture and 
that's how error came. A time will come, I pray it does not happen, where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see, these mysteries you see, if it's not guided, you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh. His ascension. His glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say, there are many people who say, ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night vigil and I want to share a mystery. I say, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fishes demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you will never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Habba. God speaking, Habba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither. Is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ my true worth is the blood of Jesus my true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars please listen to me you will never find me depressed not over money not over house I will excel God will bring the houses he will bring the cars but never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence. A newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that, ah, God, you are faithful. He's faithful. The apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did. Is God speaking to someone now? This must be the basis of your confidence. This is, this is, a, this is a vaccination against depression. Apostle, look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. 
Living God because things are not going well in your life. My brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still king. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? No. I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman you see follows me almost everywhere I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition and she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to go. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth, Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk, God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. If I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I will say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir, I'm a ministry for life. This thing we have come, it's not, it's not an ambition to use and make money. It is not because we didn't have options. It's a call by revelation. We have pledged our life and our blood. So when people love God and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry. Say me, I've retired. Oh, what are you doing? I want to start a block industry. Did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry? No. But somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. Please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost his precious loved one and I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song. And I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God would say, no, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. 
it doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. This is the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day if you don't learn the ways of God. There are times that you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women. It disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life, when your business fails, when your property is repossessed, I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience that in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma, 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 Megirma. Sing it one more time. If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit some of this, this space here. Some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because... We know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these are mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these are fathers, stand. But just to make sure that uh, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. Our pregnant ladies are... No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If you're pregnant and there is a reason... Why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We're not doing it to demean the younger people. But we're doing it to show you the excellency 
of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice clothes. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that will cause pain in your wardrobe. You just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside that you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God, as a believer, and I stop you and the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? Right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we're going to pray until you come up here that this night. <laughs> what, what I've been looking for, I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up here. That. The visions you've been wanting to see, you will see it this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness, please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against your being prosperous and your being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea it's not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that. In a bit to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received... There is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Cobble in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles? What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, 
you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing, that have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Very powerful song. Sing it one more time. Yeah, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. And if all I say is Jesus, Jesus, that's more than enough. Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters, to know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all costs. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dress, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is packed. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. 
Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come, Sam. Come, Pastor Alpha. Come, Pastor Femi. Now, look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me, for instance, that you stand among them and you feel, I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear, to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements. But not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more What's the other part? I have I've got something more than gold I'm telling to the world Think this is more than One more time When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. Ah! I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself, Jesus, Jesus is born and born. I tell it to the world, Jesus, Jesus you're is more than, than gold. I tell it to the world, Jesus is born and gold. Somebody met me years ago and said there's a trend of suits, apostle. That at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. 
Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ. God forbid, but if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house, before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible? I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. <laughs> and it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books, and I can carry my phone. My contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you. is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ.
I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you, check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. One more time. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect. Demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No. That's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding. That everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our lost-driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea the carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says with all this you're going to church, look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information. It is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross, let me tell you sincerely, he stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. 
So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned. And then my promoting the interests of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Hmm. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the Spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I would drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the wealth of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard and through my life and ministry he has become a man of God for instance, this is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you I am great, tell him show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the truth, that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or 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 making for the betterment of people's lives. 
there are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. You. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver laid before him my achievements laid before him and say jesus you are above them all that when men clap for me because of things i remind them that none of these things can take his place are we together we are going to pray thank god it's raining you will pray you will pray there's boss to carry you but you will pray Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me volume. Much less love and endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hey, your presence is heaven to me. Sing it from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Your presence. Is heaven to me. Your presence, your presence is Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. 
business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. of this world let me show you how to truly be great when you come up hither Jesus also comes up hither in your life higher higher than anything Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired, on account of my certificates. They are not useless, but they are nothing, nothing to be compared. Jesus Christ. Detach me, oh God. Detach me, oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. And with it will go the suicidal thoughts. I detach myself. The pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now listen everybody. We are praying. There are many of us here. We come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories. Where the prevalent mindset. Is earn your respect. By the things you show. Are we together? 
Now, there's nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us, by default, are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentleman, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in, but refuse to allow yourself what come from being able to be pregnant, pregnant or not. Jesus, exalted in your life, is the greatest asset you have. Living in a rented apartment or not, Jesus, in your life, Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony. Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to work miracles. And you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason. My greatest testimony is Jesus glorified. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is that God dwells in me. The Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. We are going to round up shortly, but listen to me. There is no telling the degree of pressure. Some of us are sitting on pressure every day. Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God is his hand to prosper you. So that you will buy a car and rush back home and say, finally, you want a car. Here it is. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Truly, if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Prophesy one more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed, I agree. But remember my teaching, when your soul dies for you to prosper, it's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us, those of us who are parents here and listening. Let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me, to, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. 
we are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there would be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody put pressure on you and say, bring this. Some of you at home right now, you don't even have gari and sugar and you are embarrassed. Because when they tell you, confess, the, I am a child of God, I am a this and that, you are ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my brother and my sister. Every one of us, there were times, we, we, you, you hear me share my story here. I'm not ashamed of yesterday. Because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is gari, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are a shame. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. Are we together? I want to drum it. It is ugly to see men attached to things. The secret to getting things is to be attached to God. The more you are detached to things, they will follow you. You will drive them, they will refuse to go back. There is nothing in my life today. I stand by the truth of heaven under God. There is nothing in my life today I cannot give. There is nothing that is too special in my life that cannot live. No. When anything enters my life, there is an orientation center before it finally arrives. It's given an orientation. You are a temporary asset. At any point, the master calls. You are out and you are going. The only thing that I will die protecting is Christ in me. Who is the hope of glory if i fall down here my brothers and sisters and i stop breathing i know what you will do you will pray for me for a few minutes trying to get me back to life and then if it does not work the doctors will come together and you will rush me to shika and if they put a stethoscope and say ah this guy has died how can our apostle die <laughs> while you are talking i'm watching you i'm saying oh dear you better listen to my messages. Go back and get koinonia. I'm on my way. I'm already going happy. You pray for me to come back. I see those chariots. You are joking. I'm on my way. Going. I mean, Apostle, don't talk like this. What if you die? Don't be foolish. Don't you know death also listens? Freedom came in my life when I stopped holding things. Freedom came in my life when everything minus Jesus in my life is a stranger. Everything in my life is a visitor. No visitor sleeps in your house. No matter how late he must look for, bike and go away. The only occupant, not even a tenant, is Jesus. He's giving me peace. I'm telling you sincerely. I live a very peaceful life. The higher he lifts me, the more confident I am. If you are confident because an alert entered your account, something will happen when the alert is no more there. This is what God is working in you today. I know it looks like time is going, but pay attention. Could this be why you are praying and blessings are never coming? Because the affinity you have for those things is a risk for God to trust you with it. There are preachers who want anointing so bad, they will remove Jesus to create space for the anointing. Jesus, come out, let me have some more space for oil. Billy Graham never performed any known miracle, as we know. 
I don't believe that is the optimal for a preacher. We should press to every dimension available. But one thing we know is that Billy Graham changed lives. His gospel molded civilization. Captains of industry listened to him. Kings listened to him. That is true wealth. Come up here. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. Come up here. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. When he was down, he saw different things. But now when he rose higher, his attention was called to the worship of only one person. The rain is almost done. We'll pray one more prayer. And then I'll take the altar call. And then we'll be ready to dismiss ourselves when the rain is done. But please hear me. The Lord told me something years ago. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I thought it was a joke. And I said, Lord, you mean that I become a mirror? It's easy for me. It's easier to reflect Jesus in our world today than to reflect yourself. The world will always show you something wrong. So reflect Jesus and be at peace. If you reflect yourself, they will say you didn't bab well this week. Your head is too big next week. Ah, you reduce it. It's now too small. You would have left it the other way. Reflect Jesus and enter your Sabbath. Hide behind the cross and let men know if he prospers me, he only prospered so that his name will be lifted. If he anoints me, he only brought the anointing so that his name will be lifted. The word of God. Now, this I'm explaining to you the ministry of the word. To the believer, hear me. I'm going to be redefining concept. I need, if this is all I do tonight, it is very important. Because we need men and women who are knowledgeable. Are you listening to me? For me, I've, I don't see it as pride in ministry. When people are always running, coming. Man of God, pray for me. There is a demon in our family. There is this and that. There is this. And this is why we are taking our time to teach. It is our goal that every one of us becomes strong and fortified. So that we can now go back to our homes and our ministries and our territories. And begin to legislate out of knowledge and understanding. Any ministry that makes the people totally dependent on the man of God. Such that when he's not around, they cannot do anything. There is a name for it. The Bible calls it witchcraft and manipulation. I don't care which ministry are you listening to me Jesus was with 12 people for three and a half years and he was confident to know there were still some other things that he had not completed in his course curriculum even when he resurrected he still stayed with them and he finished everything he said I am confident there are many things I can tell you but you cannot bear them now he says how be it when the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth for he shall take up the things that are mine and shall give it unto you and he left them and the people did not fail a true apostolic generation is that generation where everyone stands tall everyone is equipped with the knowledge of the things of the spirit it's not enough it is not our pride to just record testimonies of cancers and all of these things it is our pride to know that the next miracle service will just arrange five or fifteen people and we are just worshiping while the remaining people are healing and raising crutches and moving with people this is proof that we are moving forward. So for those of you in ministry, there is need for us to redefine our paradigm. When you become the man of God doing everything alone, and when without you the system cripples, you are an idol. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So we must train a church that is full of understanding. Not men and women who are gullible. Many believers do not have interest in the word of God. We only have interest for results and power and solution. That's why we like prophets. Don't waste my time teaching me the word of God. Just tell me, will this business work or not? And if no, what is the solution? Can I sow my way into changing your prophecy? Balaam, speak to me and let me go. 
But that's the kind of generation that the spirit of error will sweep and will be crippled under the trap of Satan. But the Lord is raising a generation of men and women who are empowered by the spirit. That not only will you receive healings and will you be empowered, but you will be equipped in grace and faith. One day Peter and John, after Jesus had left, they were just discussing, wondering what they were going to do with their lives. And suddenly, the Bible makes us to understand that they saw a man at the gate beautiful. They said, now the master has trained us and he gave us a name. He gave us an authority. And they looked at him. They said, today is this day, Mr. Man. Now is time. See, our greatest joy in this place is to see everyone reproducing the things that you see in our lives. Are you listening to me? To see that everyone is walking in grace and power. There's nothing wrong when you come to receive miracles. That's why we are always there. Because sometimes when you are learning and growing in the things of the spirit, after you stretch and your hand cannot reach, that's why God puts us there. We hold your hands and say we were once there. We understand. There's nothing to be ashamed of. That you prayed and prayed and prayed and the sickness didn't go and you had to run to chemists. You run to us and we say, Mr. Man, go to the chemist and get a drug. When you are well, you can keep searching. A day will come, you will build fortification. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is a school. God is training an army. But our greatest pride is not to sit down and see a queue of hundreds of people waiting for counseling. And you ask the person, what is the issue? And the person tells you something cried in my room. Ha ha. The reason why many men of God have not taken up the challenge to build God's people is because they are benefiting from the weaknesses of their members. Let me tell you what it does for them. Number one, it does not put pressure on them to keep building upon the word. Because when you have men and women who are gullible, you know in this place, if you stand upon this altar, you must be prepared. Because then, while you are standing here, there are people with prophetic radar scanning you. When you are standing upon this altar, you must confess your sins do everything you need to do before you stand this is not the kind of altar that you just stand and shout no 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 somebody might be sitting but standing from a mountain god has been equipping us he will watch you make your pride and do your error i thank god you see let me tell you something this altar here is not all you see it's high if you stand here you will know you will shake up and down in the spirit until every flesh shakes out of you because when you look at the sensitivity and the perception of those listening to you you know that you cannot teach them error and they nod their head gullibly no sir and this is what we are achieving we are not raising arrogant people we are only raising men and women of understanding so that when you go somewhere somewhere and everybody say run and everybody come and lick the man of god's leg and you see everybody going like a dog gullible generation no knowledge and understanding and even when it is truly god that has said that you will have a confirmation in your spirit that although this is a a stupid experience but then god is in it are you listening to me and so i want to teach us the ministry of the word because on one side we have believers saying once you are born again that's all there's no business with satan you are refined you are in christ satan you are seated up satan does not have a place in your life but the people are dying they are still seeing causes follow them we, we can pretend it and paint ourselves and speak in tongues in church and jump up and down your brother didn't get a job you didn't get a job your sister didn't get a job what do we call that you may not want to call it the name but what is it called are you listening to me and you are born again you are filled with the holy spirit you are not married your brother is not married you have refused to say in the name of jesus nothing is wrong with my life. but you are seeing the same thing there is a, a thin line between stupidity and faith the difference is knowledge understanding and light are you listening to me and then on one side here we have people always talking about Satan, always talking about deliverance, always talking about the strength of Satan, talking about everything, level this, 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 level 777, and they say, I met one demon, do you know how strong Satan is? 
and you see us come i mean we just imagine it and people put graphic images in their churches with satan having the horn and when they talk you are even shaking in the church they finish teaching you about satan and all of these things and we have believers who are always thinking about satan so where is the balance because in both faces we see the power of god let it rain let it rain open the floor of heaven hallelujah now watch this the moment you get born again is your spirit man listen to me this is why is there are certain people that because of the impact of the experience of their new birth they get born again they fall under the anointing they get filled with the holy spirit they begin to pray in tongues and even lay hands on people and they are healed are you listening to me and then what happens the men of god who do not have discernment just look and they call the person and say you go and be a head of our ministry somewhere and you do not realize that this is a babe by every standard the gifts of the spirit is not equivalent to spiritual maturity it takes a walking with the spirit it takes an activity of the word of God and this is what we are teaching. Tonight is miracle service. The miracle is happening to you. No, no, no. The first miracle is not your, your body is children's bread. We are coming to that. Are you listening to me? Now, but let me explain to you that concept of deliverance. Because our concept of deliverance that we have in our generation is very sad, very sorrowful, very disheartening. Hallelujah. Where believers go every day, every week, every month, every year, I need you to understand that there is something I will show you. And you will see from the word of God. It is never God's desire, listen to me, that a, be a believer keep being delivered, 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 then is it true that the authority of Christ is above Satan? Are you listening to me? However, you will need it all the time until you listen to the remaining part of my teaching. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, the word of God begins to bring deliverance what is deliverance deliverance means you are separated from things you are separated from mindsets are you listening to me you are separated from strongholds Be deliverance is not all about falling and manifesting and foaming in your mouth there is an instant when we begin to pray now for some some of you are sitting down quietly just minding your business when we begin to pray some of you don't know when you are out here rolling on the floor you see you don't even know what is wrong with you but you are born again and you are tongue talking the word of god does what we know to be deliverance it separates you it builds you are you listening to me it begins to break your mind from the ordinances of the past and the things that give satan access to your life jesus speaking says satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself that means for as long as satan finds some things that belong to him he has legal access to your life Are you listening to me? Jesus said the condition for me to defeat Satan and death is that he does not have anything. For a kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand. And so while you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are walking in life and power, your mind is not renewed. That's why one day you see somebody who loves God. A pastor, after preaching and doing everything, he just runs to his room. After praying in tongues, he spends three hours watching pornography. And even him, he doesn't know what is wrong with him. And he's embarrassed to admit that there is something torturing his spiritual life. It's easy to come out and wear suit and just stand and speak. But we all have the things that lack of knowledge has brought into our lives. That humility, that's why the Bible says you must receive the word of God with meekness. Because sometimes it will need to redefine your philosophy and break you out. Bible says strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have attained unto full age and have exercised their spiritual senses in order to discern between good and evil. We have a very weak generation of Christians. This is why Satan can ride through churches. Men will be sitting down. 
demons will come and hold mics and preach and heal and deliver and do everything and there is no discernment whatsoever are you listening to me tonight so the first ministry of the word in your life is deliverance this is the reason why hear me you break away from all the access points that satan has in your life there are two ways that satan can have access to a man's life number one what we know to be covenants number two ignorance that's where we have things like um inheritance family curses and all of these things now i need you to know that these things are not fake are you listening to me if there is something called generational blessings there must be something called generational curses the only challenge is we stretch it beyond its limits and we begin to speak and make it look like everybody everywhere i don't have any generational cause following me although there is because i've seen it in the life of others are you listening to me the word of god separates you so by the build up of the word what happens all of the demons and the strongholds that are gaining grounds in your life whether by direct encounter with the power of god such as a miracle service like this are you listening to me or the intake of God's word all of these demons and strongholds listen to me that have stayed in your that have gained access to you whenever they leave this is where many believers miss it out the Bible says that demon leaves and he goes round and comes back and does what finds the place swept clean and the Bible says you are only clean through the word so that means there is an operation of the word that made that man that clean. But what we do not realize is there are two faces to the word. One is as a weapon of deliverance. He sent forth his word and his word he let them. The sent word heals and delivers. But when the word of God is taught, it edifies. What is edification? It builds up spiritual fortification. Are you listening to me? So that now you are not only clean through the word, you are empowered and according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all richness so that whenever Satan comes, he will not find access in your life again. There are many believers who go for deliverance, fall under the anointing, roll up and down, foam in their mouth and get up and they say, thank you Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. And the demons come back again and they still see themselves worse walking in the things and they say ah, I was healed I'm sure I was healed I was healed I mean I know but now I'm seeing the sickness returning again of course because there is a fortification are you listening to me it's not enough that's why we take three weeks in a month to teach the word are you listening to me and then what miracle services like this we allow the power of God to set free, to heal, to deliver. Let me tell you something. If all we will do in Koinonia is receive, prophesy, we will have a generation. You will receive results because it's the sent word. But the sent word only heals and delivers. The sent word does not equip and build. The sent word is sent on a mission. It it accomplishes what it was sent to do and there is the word that is sent to accomplish and return back there is the word that is sent to stay with you if my word dwell if if you dwell in me and my words dwell not go and return there is an operation of the word of god that is meant to stay with you so that as you are full of the word you become like christ in power and authority and grace and there is a spiritual fortification and at that point you can speak that day though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff he comforts me at that point you become full of the word and you don't need to fear all these devils and witches and wizards again and so it's not enough for deliverance to come it's not enough for you to be healed. It's not enough for you to be free. It's not enough for you to say, okay, there are curses and things that come from families and God is breaking you free. It's not enough to say, I'm born again. You must invest in the word. That's why it's important to find your... Let me tell you something. And I say it with every sense of seriousness. If you find yourself in ministry where all you receive is prophecy, 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 you are not going to grow. 
Are you listening to me? You will receive results. Dramatic and fearful results. But you will never grow into spiritual things. The word must be taught. To send it means to declare it as it is. The word performs its operation. But when it is taught, we teach you the principles of the kingdom. That empower you and equip you to stand. Hallelujah. The teaching ministry is the hope of preparing the army of God. Without a teaching ministry, we are finished. What is another name for your lecturer? What does he do? He spends four years expounding, teaching you principles. That's the reason why you can have a university 30, 40 years. And every time you graduate a student, say from engineering, you have certain expectations because he has been taught. These are principles. In Church of the Most High, I need us to arise and realize that without the word of God seated in our spirits, we will keep going back. Satan will come out and you keep coming in. That's what is happening to many of our families. We have, I'm not against them, you can have them, but without this understanding, you will only frustrate yourself. We have monthly deliverances, weekly deliverances, all kinds of deliverances. And the truth is, most of the people are not interested in growth. They are just interested in results. And since they told them that it's this witch or that wizard that is stopping them, every time we go to meet a prophet, we just want instant solution. That's why many people are not interested in teaching ministries. It takes an unusual grace of God to keep a crowd to listen to the word. Because when crowds come, they come out of their lust and selfishness. Not many people are interested in growth and for the power of God to touch them. You want a man of God that just comes up and says, everybody stand up. And they say, lift your right hand. Bring a, a white handkerchief, a red one. If there is not, we have it here for sale. Are you listening to me? And by the time, we like, we like instructions. Not because we love God. We want quick things. We, we like by cutting processes. So all of you who want husbands, quickly run, come and drop 1,000 naira, and then I will pray for you. You can drop the money and fall under the anointing and roll and go back to your seat. You will never get consistent results. So we have programmed ourselves to depend day and night. And we have a lot of men of God who look and they call you. They call some of our fathers. Bring 30,000 and say not. He say, I will shut the heavens over you and your business. And the man is running. He say, hey, hey, hey. The prophet said he will shut the heavens. Find 30,000. Even if you don't have, give me. Tell somebody, grow up. That's why we are criticized day and night. Because our job is to open the body to the truth of God's word unadulterated. And the dangerous thing is it puts pressure on all of us men of God. Because the moment your members begin to have light, you as the man of God cannot sit down again. It will put pressure on you to keep pressing. And this is what many men of God do not want. We don't want anyone to challenge you. The moment you stand and you are looking and you say, I see a river. 50 people are also seeing that river. So you can't lie. You can't just say, I see a river. Ah, ah, ah. The people have been trained. Their eyes are open. They are only sitting quietly, but they are seeing. You tell lies. Somebody walks up to you and says, sorry, yo, not to offend you. But was that, is it not a crown? I saw it too. That means your prayer life has to be alive. That means your word life has to be alive. That means the day you rise up from the bed of fornication and come up, there will be discernment. It puts pressure on you to walk in truth. And this is what many people do not want. But God is raising an apostolic generation that will not only receive miracles, but will be empowered. Not to be arrogant and condemn people. Are you listening to me? But to be fortified spiritually that will command results. That's the reason why our meetings are not just to heal, to deliver, but it's an impartation. Are you listening to me? And that's what some of you are going to receive tonight. Impartation. As I'm speaking to you right now, many of you are receiving impartation. It doesn't take more than one minute for you to be healed. Are you listening to me? It does. The word of God is not so slow. But the word of God is what you must receive in your spirit. And then you are strong. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this tonight? And so there are many of you that although you are born again, you will realize that Satan has gotten access to your life 
and access to your family. And tonight we are going to take authority all over all of those demonic manifestations. Are you listening to me? That everything that has delayed you by the power of the word of God, we will push you forward prophetically. Hallelujah. That you will be fortified with the word of God. That you will go and now be the miracle worker. You will release the miracle in your homes. Are you listening to me? That many of you tonight will encounter an anointing that will cause you to so prosper and you will begin to make others prosper by reason of that anointing. That many of you will encounter an ability of the spirit, discernment. You stand in your house and the Lord begins to show you things. This is what we want. And for all of you who came here with every kind of sickness, I want you to know that there is a devil behind it and that devil is going to leave you. Are you listening to me? Looked at the woman and said, Woman, thou art loose. From what? What did he see? He said, Thou art loose from thy infirmity. There is a wicked spirit called the spirit of infirmity. And the light and the power of God's word comes to bring you miracles. How many of you desire to walk in greater levels of his anointing? Because there will be an impartation in this place. In one minute, I'd like you to rise up on your feet and pray. Pray and say, Lord, give me a miracle. My heart is open. All of you who are sick, now is the time for faith to be released in your spirit. Within the next few minutes that we have, I'd like you to release your faith because the power of God is here. We hail you most high. Hands, everybody. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Lord. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Lord. We hail you, Lord. We hail you, Lord. I want to cast out devils and break men free from the oppression of Satan. The power of God is so strong in this place. And inside and outside. Ushers, please, I want you to help. Hallelujah. As I begin to speak, the power of God will come like a mighty rushing wind. And it will blow. Ushers, let me help those people. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of Satan broken over lives, over families. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus, every divination and stronghold of Satan, I break you free right now. Every manifestation of Satan, go, 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 go. I release the power of God right now upon the congregation inside and outside i cast out devils in the name of jesus i see the power of god like a mighty rushing wind lift your hands everybody hallelujah now we're going to shout the name jesus just once my god I see a sword rolling in the spirit. As we shout that name, the power of God will fall and set men free. All shall be ready. Are you ready? Lift your hands, everybody. I like you to shout, Jesus. Jesus. 
Bring them out. Fire. 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 The fire of the spirit. Break the That fire upon you. That devil is a liar. Record to break it. Make up so Inside and outside. The fire of the spirit. The power of the Holy Ghost upon you in the name of Jesus. Every devil, every devil, go, 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 go. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus bring this lady that devil you know my voice out of her right now come out of her come out of her come out of her please bring this lady the power of God is still falling inside and outside Satan leave this lady now come out of her come out of her now by the power of the Holy Ghost please bring this lady find a place even in her family therefore Satan go go come out of her right now in the name of Jesus this is not all please lift your hands again the Lord still tells me there's more one more time we are going to shout the name that name that is above every other name and as you shout now I see angels I see angels now I see angels come on shout Jesus 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 Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Rapatosa, Rekete, Rebaviata, Raposcopriata, Ekaratasia, Rashepania, Raposcopriata, Rantacalia, Rekotosia, Rantamaya, come out of her, come out of her, in the name of Jesus, Rekete Ketebaka, Reposopriata, Rekete Ketebaka. all of you I see a ring of fire and I'm going to pray for you as I pray the fire of the Holy Spirit will set you free in the name of Jesus whose I am and who I serve every devil here right now go come out of them Come out! Come out! 
Come out! Come out! I set you free by the authority. I break you free from covenants. I break you free. Hallelujah. Please bring that lady. Oh no, you cannot stand the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hold on. Satan, your reign ends. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Let her go. You are free. You are free. You are free. Hallelujah. Now look at me. The Lord is showing me the vision of someone in this place. I don't know why God is flowing like this, but please let's just follow him. Time is where we'll have to really hurry up. I'm seeing a substance on your hand. Whether it was given to you by your mother or someone in your family. And you use it for protection. Who is that? It was given to you. Please come out. Tonight God is setting men free. Please come out. There is such a person in this place. Please make sure you are listening inside and outside. Who is that person? Please come out quickly. Except if it's one of these people lying down at the anointing. There is such a person like that. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as you identify that person, let the person come out. Now, I want to minister healing. The healing power of God is here. I sense the healing power of God. Now, because of our time, we may not call our cases individually. Hallelujah. We'll just begin to release the life and the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Madam, I was, Jaffa, this is the woman, right? Please come. What is the problem? Mike, please. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been having pains in my, my spinal cord. Down. I cannot walk well. You cannot walk well? I can't bend down. I can't lift anything from the ground. What led to it? It was just pain that started on my Just lips. pains? Yes. You believe God will set you free? Yes. That's why you came tonight. Yes. You have faith yes. that the Son of God yes. will set you free. Yes. Yes, He will. Amen. He will. Amen. What is this on your neck? They gave me from Shika. They gave you from yes. Shika yes. to aid you. Yes. You believe God is going to set you free? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of infant. I bring life to your back. I bring life to your back. Right now, the power of God flows through your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the power of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Madam, the power of God is on you.
go now 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 in the name of Jesus Walk as fast as you can. Run. Come back. Run. 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 wrong with you. There are some ladies with menstrual issues. I command, let your flow resume now in the name of Jesus. My grain has just been healed. Please check yourself. As soon as you are healed, run out. We don't have all the time. My grain be healed now. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. God is giving miracles. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Right now, I release the power of God. I command healing for peptic ulcer. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Check yourself. Go ahead and check yourself. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady with breathing problems. You came here with breathing problems. You can't breathe well. Who are you? It's time for your miracle. Breathing problems. I hope those outside are hearing. Can they hear? Breathing problems. Who is that breathing problem? Sometimes you have to gasp for breath. Please quickly let's save time. Hallelujah. Now everyone who is in need of any kind of miracle any kind that you came here with there's no time to mention all of them you're going to shout i receive that's what the lord tells me three times the third time celebrate god and begin to do what you couldn't do if you find yourself healed i'd like you to come maybe we can take one or two testimonies are you ready to shout i receive it's an act of faith in the name of jesus go ahead and shout Receive it. Receive it. I release miracles. I release miracles. 
Check yourself. What couldn't you do before? Okay. I find it very difficult to breathe. How about now? Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any issue? No. Are you serious? Yes. Breathe sir. in and out. Do what you couldn't do. Okay, let's try to jump small. Because when you jump, you any issue, yes. you are healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone I'm seeing. One side of your ear. You feel like water. You don't hear very well with it. Who is the person? One side of your ear. Quickly run. Which of the ears? Which of the ears? Lay your hands on the one that is good. This is the one that is good. You don't hear well with this one. Okay. Thou devil of deafness. I hope you want somebody to hold this child. For you, please, can hey, ushers. That's why we need lady ushers. If you are here, you are not part of the ushering team. Sorry, boy, your mother will get back to you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil of deafness. I command your ears be opened now in the name of Jesus. Now cover this. Say Jesus. Can you hear? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Perfection. The ear has opened. She couldn't hear with this ear. Stand up, madam. Which ear couldn't you hear with? Are you hearing right now? Close it. Are you hearing? Tell us your testimony. Very well, sir. Okay. Close your ear. Before I couldn't hear with this ear. Go ahead, talk. Let I her talk. I cannot hear with this ear. Okay. When there's any phone call, I will have to put it on a uh, loud voice before I will answer the call because of the pains of this, this, this side. Sometimes the right eye of my right side will be bringing, bringing out water. water. Yes, I see it. The but now that devil that has gone. But now I'm free. I don't hear any pain. <laughs> I think we should dance a little. Are you ready? Just, just transpose and let's... Miracles are still happening. Worship, help me. I don't have an idea. Just celebrate miracles. Rekia, Rekia, 
Rekia. That's the name that I hear. Rekia. Please come quickly. Rekia. <laughs> The Lord says I should prophesy a restoration for Rekia. That's what the Lord says I should tell you. This is a scripture the Lord gives me. He said, For many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, But the Lord delivered him from them all. Hallelujah. And Jankfa is going to pray for you. I feel led that he should just pray and lay his hands and prophesy, call forth. The thing about the prophetic, it, it creates to call forth a restoration. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we demand a restoration Come for on, our this hour. Faith, release your hands. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the years that the enemy has stolen from you is restored now. In the name of Jesus. We uproot the planting of the enemy out of your stomach, out of your stomach, out of your stomach, out of your stomach, in the name of Jesus. Even to your marriage, the Lord brings a restoration. The Lord wipes your tears in the name of Jesus. Go forth. God said he's healing you right now. He's healing you right now. He's healing you of high blood pressure. He's taking that growth out of your stomach. In the name of Jesus, you are delivered this hour in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You are here. You cannot turn your hand completely like this. It's been a pain for a long time. And you prayed. You came to this meeting and you said, God, you must visit me. You are a woman. I'm seeing you tie something on your head. You tie something on your head. Who is that? Come, please run. Which of the hands? This hand, what happened to it? I don't know. Satan, I command your power broken over this hand. I release the anointing of the spirit. What you feel is the fire of the Holy Ghost going around your hand. Let her be free right now. Right now. Right now. It's the power of God, the anointing of the spirit going through you. You are free. Madam, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I am free. I am free. Now wind your hand as wide as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Go ahead. Total freedom. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you do this before? No. The Lord heals you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For no man can enter a man's house and spoil the goods except he first binds the strong man. That's why I said, for if it is true that Satan is the only resistance, then nothing stops your healing. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh dear, we're out of time. Guys, there's really no room for the ministers to come in. But I'd like us to pray. Hallelujah. We really, really are out of time. This is past nine. This meeting tonight is supposed to change you. It's supposed to bring something out of your life. Are you listening to me? So what we're going to do right now, because we don't have time, is um, the ministers, in the few minutes that we have, they'll just move through the crowd so that the people they would have brought on, they can just minister to them while I just minister to everyone in mass. Is that correct? Is that okay? So we'll be doing that right now. Please, ministers, just go. As the Lord directs you, just walk through the crowd and minister to the people, please, so that we can save time. Hallelujah. Now, all of you, listen to me. Let's do it really, really fast. Hallelujah. Now, I want to release... Did you bring prayer requests? No. You did? Okay, well, we only do it as the Spirit leads. Okay, but quickly, quickly. Ushers, at the same time, we are doing all of this at the same time. You are submitting your prayer request if you don't have any right one quickly and concentrate while the ministers, please walk through the crowd by the Spirit and just minister. We have to do this real fast. We took our time to teach the word. 
you have four ladies in your family no one is married it's part of your request run out here quickly four ladies no one is married four ladies inside and outside please make sure you are listening four ladies no one is married and even you right now you are not married you have been praying for it run out you came here for god to give you a miracle you believe that you believe god gives you a miracle i want you to know that god will terminate everything that looks like delay any other person please come quickly hallelujah the lord himself do you understand there is the fragrance of the spirit of god that comes upon you the bible says isaac speaking said the smell of my son is like the field that the lord has blessed hallelujah i'm going to pray for you right now i'd like you to believe by the faith of the son of god that god himself is going to terminate you will be very surprised it will look like magic it's the power of god are you listening to me if you go to a native doctor in where did they, where are the people in zaria where did they reside in zaria city and ask him let me tell you he will do some incantations for you and you'll find out that you are married but god himself is mightier than any man are you listening to me thank you father lift up your hands all of you in front lord i command that manifestation of satan over your family to be gone i see a lot of oppression in your family come please i need a lady i need a lady any come come to the front please just lay your hands on her stomach that's what i need just lift your hands you just lift your hands in the name of jesus be free from that wickedness in your family be free now by the power of the holy spirit i set you free help me in the name of jesus christ be free now by the power of the holy spirit be free for your family right now we command supernatural marriages by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus supernatural marriages by the power of the holy spirit supernatural marriages for everyone in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah please write it quickly because we want to do an impartation now and there's still an announcement please don't be quick to go there is a very important announcement we must communicate hallelujah write your prayer request quickly want to do an impartation so that you don't fall on someone writing this i don't know how hungry you are for more of the anointing of the spirit are you listening to me i don't know how hungry you are the ministers are ministering to pastors are the ministers are ministering to people there's no time oh okay you receive it too oh you receive the anointing and you are touching her to do it for her okay go ahead pray for her in the name of Jesus, we declare the power of the Holy Spirit through you to her. In the name of Jesus, healing and perfection. And may that anointing not leave you. From today, look at me, I'm prophesying to you. Any lady you lay hands on, you will release supernatural marriages and restoration. If you believe that, lift your hands. Because you have stood in the ushering department, I command that this dimension of impartation comes upon your life. You will see it happen and you will be surprised. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Worshippers, are we ready to pray? Worshippers, I think you should receive something to hold your hands together. Hallelujah. Worship team, let's start with you. An anointing and an impartation upon you. Hallelujah. For greater grace, for greater dimension. Hallelujah. I'm just going to walk. There is an angel I see standing close to me. That brings the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you people. Hallelujah. I'm just going to walk and stretch my hands and I see the power of God. I see Steve Strings. The Lord tells me you are stepping into a strange order. A strange order. Hallelujah. Worship people, are you ready? Please just lift your hands as I move in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing flow to you. Let it flow to you. Let it flow to you. Every one of you. Let it flow to you, Steve. Let it flow to you. Mike, let it flow. Sheyi, Tosin, go ahead. Yinka, everyone. I release it. Receive it now. Now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive it now. An impartation. You begin to sing like angels by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an activation upon you. 
in the name of Jesus, we release this anointing upon the Koinonia worship team. You begin to function in an order of power. Your worship begins to take the house to a new level of grace, a new level of power. Every worshiper in the crowd, this anointing touches you right now. Everyone, please put your hands down if you are not singing. Every worshiper, now I release that anointing. If you are a worshiper here, lift your hands. Let that anointing flow right now to every worshiper. I command new songs. Come out of your spirit, man. Come out of your spirit, man. New songs. Retaka bandia. Agrite kebosoto. Bande kapariaka. Rekete seke. Repanda zata. Ekarieka tabasa. Mapareke bosupaya. Everyone in the ministry of worship, I stir it up. This fire, this anointing. Receive it, receive it, receive it like a mighty rushing wind inside and outside. A new order of worshippers, a new order of spiritual people. Outside, I see the anointing of God flowing on some of you outside outside through the window i stretch my hands let the anointing hit every worshiper now 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 let new songs arise let new songs a new pattern of worship will be introduced to the body of christ a new pattern heavenly songs for the instrumentalists you will no longer pray instruments you will be worshippers upon the mistral go ahead steve and play just the just the guitar go ahead and flow i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp hey, mass impartations lift your hands i'm going to release the fire of god an apostolic fire a prophetic fire a healing anointing get ready lift up your hands now receive it receive it take it in the name of jesus right now right now right now in the name of jesus take it take it lift your hands Everyone, thank it. But I can take it over. Repose your bracketing. Reketetetete. Repakapanya. Fire upon your spirit. Reketorotopaya. Mam bracketete. The spirit of prophecy. Receive it. Receive it. The prophetic spirit. The prophetic anointing. Receive it, the prophetic anointing. After the count of three, the spirit of prayer and supplication will fall upon the house. Prayer lives will be activated right now. At the count of three, one, two, Intercessors, arise! Arise! Reketetetetete! Arise! Depotosoto! Receive the quickening of the Spirit! Receive quickening upon your spirit, man! Great intercessors, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer. Let the fountains be broken from your spirit. Let the fountains be broken
Hallelujah. Sorry, we are taking time. We'll soon be out of here. I want to release the healing anointing. Many of you will step into a strange order of healing that will make you afraid. If God be God tonight, then it comes upon you. Lift your hands as high as it can get for it to come upon many, including your little children, I see. Let the healing anointing flow, 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 flow. flow. Let no one be left. Let the healing power Reketetete Reketete Bokoya Reparikete Repande Kodoso Rapariaka Reketo Sosoy Reparia Apataka Tosekes Barikete Rondoso Super Riketi Arata Bariakatan Entro Toso Koto Let it flow outside i stretch my hands to you receive it outside receive it the healing anointing outside take it take it take it take it I want to pray over your finances. Make sure you're standing for your loved ones. Enough of struggling is not by power. Isaiah 45 verse 3. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Deuteronomy 8 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power. The anointing, there is, the ability, there is an anointing to prosper. Lift your hands, everybody. Please receive it. Please, please. We need it. I always do this. We need a prosperous generation standing for your loved ones. With this anointing, let every debt, I don't care how much, for you and your family. Let every debt be cancelled. Receive it strong. I pray for you. Receive it strong. For the Lord gave it to me. The Lord gave it to me. And tonight, for the love I have for you, I declare, receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it. Let it flow. Prosperity in your business. Favor. The Esther anointing. The Esther anointing. I, re I release it with all my heart. I release it. I release it. Strange order of wealth, of favor of prosperity receive it receive it those of you standing in for your loved ones those of you standing in for your loved ones families if your family has suffered financially and you think enough is enough lift your hands lift your hands if you think your family has struggled hear me I don't care what your father is doing or what your mother is doing for it is the lord that can empower a man and tonight if i be a servant of god if i be sent by the anointing of the spirit out of the virtue that he has put i invoke it from the heavens receive it now receive it now receive it now receive it receive it receive it receive it your families will enter a strange order of favor 
a strange order of prosperity. Even if you are the only one sponsoring yourself from today, stop struggling. Move forward. I give you a prophetic push into the next level of kingdom wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. Everything that represents a delay in your life, whether marriage, whether relationship, whether job, you are on a contract, they are supposed to sign it. They have not signed it right now. Makapa reketo, rente kabariata, aproskope rekete, barika positai. Under this anointing, I command every closed door be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From tonight, I declare that you will step into a level of favor. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. A strange order of favor where strangers, including your enemies, will work to bless you. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. All of you who are workers here, you have a job. All of you who are workers, it's time for the people around you to know that the Lord has honored you. Listen, we'll start with those who are lecturers. If you're a student here and your father is a lecturer or your mother, you can stand in for them. We want, I don't care what the system is from the Senate. We want to legislate certain things here by the prophetic order of God's spirit. Lift your hands. You're a lecturer or you're standing in for a lecturer. Enough is enough that anyone that has been due for promotion and has been delayed by the wickedness of men. The Bible says in Job 5, he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men. For there is a, a God that can set a man down and lift another man up right now. Under this anointing of the Spirit. Promotion comes neither from the east, nor the south, nor the west. I command my father and my king. Supernatural promotion upon every lecturer. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That day, that day that conspire against you, hear me, that day that conspire against you will find themselves working for your good. I command it in the name of Jesus. I command it in the name of Jesus. Please, where is Stanley, Bishop? The Lord brings a new degree of honor for you. No, I want to pray for you first. The Lord brings for you a new degree and a new order of honor. The Lord says, I should tell you, for the times of faithfulness have been measured. And your faithfulness is speaking. A strange order of honor is what the Lord brings. And I pray in the name of Jesus, let this strange anointing come upon you and mantle you to bring you honor beyond your imagination. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to round up quickly. Please. There is an important announcement we are going to communicate right now. Hallelujah. You are here. You are not born again. You have not given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. You have not given your heart to the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I pray right now. Listen to me. Inside and outside. You are here and you are not born again. We love you. The Lord does not condemn you. 
it's time for you to come home and start a new life with the Lord. Inside and outside. Or you have given your heart to the Lord. But you have found yourself derailing from the path of the Spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus, I encourage you. Please, let's all rise before we sit down. Let's all rise. Everyone, come out quickly and stand. Everyone who belongs in that category. You want to give your heart to the Lord. Or you are making a commitment. Please appreciate them as they come. Appreciate them. Leave your seat inside and outside. This is the greatest miracle. Appreciate them. The Lord is talking to you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Welcome them. We welcome you home. You are welcome home. You are welcome home. No man condemns you. God is still speaking to some other people. You are welcome. We will wait for you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so delighted in my heart for all of you who have come out to indicate an interest to love God and to walk in his ways. The Bible says, all who draw nigh to him, he will in no wise cast away. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord himself will bring you into a new experience. This is the greatest testimony you will ever have in your life. That you made a decision for Jesus Christ. Is the pivot on which everything in your Christian life and experience will revolve around. So lift your hands after me as we pray this prayer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm born again. I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am one with Christ. I partake of the blessings of redemption. There's power to be called a child of God. The hand of God is upon me. Holy Spirit, come and find abode in me. Make a vessel and a treasure out of me. That I'm born again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, preserve these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. Preserve them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you teach them the principles of the kingdom and make generals out of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Appreciate them. This is the greatest decision you have ever made. Hold on, hold on. Please, I'd like you to just follow the ushers one moment. They'll just have your names and your contact details and we'll reach you. You'll do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, Stanley, please, there is a project that we are going to begin. Please, everybody listen. This is very important. Just a few minutes. I know we've taken our time. I'm really sorry. But how many of you think it's worth it? Hallelujah. Okay, so just listen to Stanley. He's going to be passing a very important announcement. Please sit down inside and outside. We'll soon be out. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.